what is happening? Oh my goodness. Just two days after the Denver Broncos released our highest paid player on offense in Russell Wilson, we go and we out of nowhere in an unexpected move that nobody saw coming. And I'm going to show you that no one saw it coming. We cut fan favorite longest tenured player on the Denver Broncos, multiple all pro multiple pro bowl safety, Justin Simmons. And by doing so, we saved ourselves $15 million almost in the cap. Uh, we're going to break down the three reader, the three reasons why folks are saying this happened. I'm going to give you my take on why I think it happened, and we'll get some reaction from all y'all in Broncos country. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I break down all things Denver sports, and if you love Justin Simmons as much as I did, and you love the Denver Broncos, it would help me out a lot if you would like and subscribe. So diving in here, we see that, uh, you know, Justin Simmons has been a fan favorite, been here for nine years. His first year here in Denver was the best his team had ever performed. He was a game over 500 that year with Trevor Simeon. And since then, he's never been on a winning Broncos team. Um, he is the all-time leader in interceptions against um, Patrick Mahomes. He has had some just highlight moments, and he's been an all-around leader on the field and off the field, and this came as a complete shock to everyone in Broncos country. You see his wife uh, tweeting, goes from crying to crying even harder. If this is something she'd mentally prepared for, you, you don't expect her to still be crying. You saw uh, Justin Simmons was the uh, honorary captain for the HBCU All-Star Game. They asked him about what he thought about being back in Denver, and he was saying he couldn't wait. He was excited about what Sean Payton was building. He was excited to be a part of the squad that turned things around. And you just see other players, P.J. Locke, I think this gif explains it all. Right. We're all just like, what? How? Like of all players to cut. Why is this the one uh, we we see uh, just a couple other hilarious, um, sad. I mean, we see Patrick Sertan be like this one hurt, man. You see other guys just showing their shock like they were not expecting this whatsoever. Uh, my favorite one, I think, was Nick Benito. What did I just wake up to? And I think that's how we all felt. You know, of all the players on this squad to cut, if we're trying to get under the salary cap, why is it him? And and that is the, the million-dollar question that I want to take a little bit of time here and answer. So the first reason, uh, the re my, my brother texted me immediately and just said, the Denver Broncos are tanking for Archie Manning. Uh, we know one of the Manning boys who's at Texas now will be in the draft in just a few years here. And is it the, are the Denver Broncos trying to tear down? Are they trying to tank? So that is the first idea here is that the Denver Broncos are trying to tank. And my pushback to that is if the Denver Broncos were trying to tank, we saw the really infamous quote and the infamous like clip when Sean Payton was on the Colin Cowherd show last year when he came out and said, the NFL is going to have to change their rules about tanking because Caleb Williams is so good that teams are just going to tank for Caleb Williams. Well, the Denver Broncos were the leading horse in the race for tanking for Caleb Williams. We easily could have tanked for Caleb Williams if Sean Payton believed in tanking. The other reason I don't believe that theory that we're just trying to tear this whole thing down and tank is that if that was the case, we would have done it when we were 1-5. and five. We would have done it when we were down 28-7 to the Chicago Bears. Like You don't even put up an effort. We could have pulled Russell early. We could have pulled Russell Wilson at one and five and put in a Ben DiNucci or someone who, who isn't going to get us win. So I think if there was any time Sean Payton was going to tank, it would have been this season when we were nearly mathematically eliminated. Instead, conversely, we went on a crazy run and beat five playoff teams that we were underdogs in every game. We held the Kansas city chiefs to nine points and played our butts off, almost beat them in arrowhead. We go to Buffalo win. We beat a hot uh, Browns team. We beat a hot Vikings team of all times. If we were going to tank, we would have done it last year or this season we just wrapped up. The other reason I don't buy into that is reading into Greg Penner's comments. He's the part of that Walton Penner Walmart ownership group. And he talked about, we are just as eager to win. We have just as many sleepless nights to win. We want to win fast. He is a very like, well thought out person. He's run mega corporations. He easily could have politically said something like, we're going to do a soft relaunch. We're going to close down some stores. Like I, he's shut down Walmarts before to open them in other locations. He would have said that that's the case. 
even in how the Denver Broncos made the announcement after the Russell Wilson cutting was we're excited to build this team for next year and the years to come. And, and even when we went out and, and cut Russell Wilson or benched Russell Wilson, what Sean Payton said about it was we need an energizing spark. We saw Sean Payton uh, get a, a comment leaked to the media this year about how he was going to be really ticked off if the Broncos didn't make um, make the playoffs. And, and the fact is that Sean Payton does not have an infinite runway because of how he's neutered George Payton and he's running the show. He only signed a five-year contract. He's got four of those left. Do you really think that if he has missed the playoffs two years in a row and sent guys like Russell Wilson pack in, imagine if Russell Wilson goes to the Steelers and makes the playoffs next year and Russell Wilson makes the playoffs before the Broncos do and he sent fan favorites like like Justin Simmons and um, – and Russell Wilson packing, I do not think he would survive up to that third season. I just think that would be a really, really hard sell. He needs to win and and win now. So that that's the first reason is like that we are trying to tank. And I just don't buy it. But I would love to hear if you have evidence to the contrary or you think I'm like crazy or just drinking all the Broncos Kool-Aid. But I don't think we're trying to tank. The second theory or the, the second leading idea about this Justin Simmons thing Are we trying to, all of the reports have been that we are eating all of Russell Wilson's dead cap over two years, that it's the biggest dead cap for one player in NFL history. We've heard that ad nauseum, and we've heard up till now that what the Broncos are going to do is we're going to split that cap space up over two years, but we haven't actually heard that officially. We've just heard those as rumors. So I I think there could be some merits to that idea. Like if we're truly trying to eat all of that in one year so that next year we have more cap room than anyone, if we eat all that in one year and then we don't have Simmons or Sutton or these other guys next year, we could spend like nobody's business next year. Um, So that is an interesting theory. But the the theory that I think is most plausible actually is um, what is coming here from uh, DNVR's Henry Chisholm. Love this show. The DNVR Broncos pod is one of my daily listens and just they do a great job. I show them all the time, them and, and Todd Davis. But look at this uh, tweet right here. One of the reasons we did this now when we thought, I th- I think if you had asked me yesterday, like what, what Broncos are going to cut a player tomorrow, you're going to have to make a video. I'd be prepping for a Cortland Sutton video or Jerry Judy video I never would have guessed a Justin Simmons video, but here is what they're saying is that we have to, as an organization, we have to be under the cap by Wednesday of next week. And we don't have to like be locked in on those cap numbers, but we have to get under it. And there's a bunch of players that we need, we could trade to get under the cap, but you can't actually start trading until that league year starts. So we know that we, we have, Cortland Sutton on the trade block. We have Jerry Judy on the trade block. There are teams who want Garrett Bowles on the trade block. And so maybe the Denver Broncos are like, well, we got to get under. We got to get 20 million under. We'll cut Tim Patrick and then we will cut uh, Justin Simmons and that'll get us under. And then we will trade Cortland Sutton, trade Jerry Judy or whatever is going to happen after that. Once we get under it, then we'll make these moves. If this theory is correct, that means the Denver Broncos are trying to clear massive cap space so that they can make a big splash. That that means is uh, a Kirk Cousins actually back on the table? And I think that would totally put a dagger in the whole idea that the Denver Broncos are trying to tank next year. Uh, but I'd, I'm very curious what you all think. Um, what is the actual reason that the Denver Broncos cut One of our all-time favorite players. It's going to be a crazy few days. We still have at least one move that needs to happen. Who do we think gets cut next? I think if I had to make a bet, I would definitely think it's going to be Tim Patrick is is the most likely cut candidate. And then I still could see us making some pretty massive trades. Those won't start until Wednesday. The other thing we just can't look past is all of the massive um, free agents that we have at safety. Um, and so I, I think you're now in a spot where if, if you're the Denver Broncos, you can't trade Simmons because you have all of these teams who are like, why would I trade for a player that I have to pay mega money to? I only have one year left on their deal when I could get 
I mean, the Buffalo Bills cut two safeties. The Eagles cut their safety. Jamal Adams got cut by Seattle. We have so many safeties out there. Uh, the Lions aren't signing uh, Gardner Johnson back. So there are all these safeties out there that by with all of that, the value of a safety drops precipitously. It's kind of the opposite of what I talked about yesterday with Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton's value spikes in a trade because we saw the franchise tag go out to the top three free agents. So now teams who want a wide receiver, if you want a wide receiver, you got to give us something for Cortland Sutton. But you thought going into the offseason, oh, I could get Mike Evans. Oh, I could get Michael Pittman. Oh, I could get T. Higgins. All those dudes have been signed to long-term deals or franchise tagged. The actual opposite of that is happening with now teams who need a safety are just have the best luck, man. If you are the Detroit Lions now, you are like a kid on Christmas Day because you're going to be able to go out and get an all-pro safety for nothing. So it's a crazy, crazy time. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens before free agent or once this free agency and trade period opens up because that will clearly let us know what's going to happen in the draft. Is Sean Payton going to land a Jameis Winston? Is he going to get Kirk Cousins because we're going to really clear out all that cap space, then we're not drafting a quarterback at 12. But if we clear all this cap space and take Russell Wilson's hit and draft a JJ, McC- uh, JJ McCarthy, then you know we are in reset rebuild mode. So hope you're always here for it, Broncos country. Been an absolute blast riding with you, Broncos country. Let's giddy up. I wanted to make it so bad for Justin Simmons next time.